Okay, I think we can. Uh, I think we can start. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Just a few housekeeping rules before we start. Um, Amido, uh, I'm with Lake Fest. With me is Amit. Hey, Amit. Hey, Ido. Uh, hello, everyone. Good seeing you today. Uh, this webinar is broadcasted in two medias. One is LinkedIn. The other one, those of you that are here on this Zoom invite, everybody is welcome. Uh, as far as I know, everybody here is um, anonymously listening on, listening in, uh, and you are on mute. If you have any questions, then please make sure. If you have any questions, then please make sure to post to to post those directly on uh, the Q and A question. And if you have any questions on uh, uh, LinkedIn, we have a member also uh, listening in there, and uh, and she will help us in. Uh, uh, transmitting those questions here to this Q&A session as well. So uh, thanks everyone again, let's begin. We're going to talk about the Lake, Lake FS and Airflow integration. Uh, be, before we start, uh, very quickly, it will be uh, good to understand who here is familiar with Lake FS at all, just so we know how deep we should go into this or not. So you have a single question in front of you, have you tried like a fest before would be great to kind of just get uh, uh, that. Uh, 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 okay, so we have we have a nice amount of people that never heard of Lake FS, uh, Amit. So we'll want to talk about uh, that as well. Um, okay, so we'll do that uh, and let's start. So we're here to talk about ways to troubleshoot failed production jobs today. And the thing is that we have solutions such as Airflows that took the, the, the regular ETLs and make them something that, that is a lot more complicated over time. Uh, the, the, the painting on the, on the right is uh, a smaller subset of part of an ETL that Amit and I saw at some point. And we actually, we saw ones that are much, much bigger than this with our field. And the challenge starts with what happens when you know this step over here fails, and <laughs> then we need to look at it. So, I mean, how do you tr not not to, like not to embarrass you, but you have uh, you have a lot of experience uh, uh, in the data engineering world throughout uh, your your different companies that you worked with. This happens, something breaks. What do you do? Yeah, normally I look into the log file. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to decipher the logs. You have so much information, information overload, uh, but you try to look for the error message in the log, trying to figure out, and then you look into uh, identify the issue, what's happening, and you the issue can be either at the program level or it can be a data issue. And data evolves over time. And when you're running a DAG, let's say you have lots of step in every step, there's a, some data transformation is happening. So you have to look into data evaluation, make sure is the problem with, with the data, is the problem with the program, then you fix and rerun from the start and let's hope and pray that everything goes well. But while this thing is happening, while you are troubleshooting, trying to fix the problem, your data in the corrupt, corrupted state in your production environment. Okay, so this is, this is kind of like, uh... Uh, the reality, I guess, of uh, that we're trying to help with, which is we run complicated ETLs using solutions like Airflow, which make it incredible, incredibly easy to run uh, these complicated tasks. And then something breaks. And then as it's, as it's broken under fire, we need to troubleshoot this, which is a complicated thing as itself. Okay. So that's where LakeFS comes into place. For those, since we have a lot of uh, folks here that never heard of LakeFS, LakeFS basically takes engineering best practices and applies them to data. So the idea is to run data as code, manage data the same way as we run code. It sits on top of an object store and it provides Git interface to that object store. So think about your S3 or Azure Blob or Google Storage or Minio or, or Delhi CS, right? Whatever object store you use, now you can apply Git capabilities on top of that bucket. So you can take a bucket or a group of buckets and you can branch them, right? You can make those changes and then you can merge them, right? So Git for data, and then uh, the ecosystem of tools that we have can access those versioning through an API with using LakeFS. And from a refactoring perspective, we made it uh, super simple. If before we were accessing a uh, collection on a bucket, now we will use a name of a branch or a commit identifier. 
So this is where it becomes interesting, right? Uh, uh, a branch can be production or an ETL branch. A commit identifier can be production yesterday at 5 p.m. before the ETL ran or production yesterday at 10 p.m. after the ETL finished, right? And then those Git actions themselves will show you in a demo very, very soon. We can run them from a web interface, from a command line, like a lakectl command that you see here, or uh, directly from the notebook, right? Using Python code, for example, or directly from Airflow, Airflow uh, with Airflow operators uh, as something that we're going to show here. Um, speaking of, how do we integrate with Airflow, Amit? Yeah, people are familiar with uh, the people who use Airflow. They are familiar with the different types of provider. Uh, so LakeFS also provides uh, a, a kind of provider for Airflow, which makes life easier to interface with LakeFS. And that provider includes lots of different operators, like to create the branch, upload the object, get the information about the object, commit, uh, any, any changes you are making through the Airflow DAG, and get the commit details and, and merge the changes at the end of the ETL process to your production branch. So those are the pre-built operators. And then we also have hooks, which are basically interfacing with the LakeFS server. If you, we don't have pre-built operators, then you can use hooks and, and talk to LakeFS server. We also provide sensors. Uh, people are, who are familiar with the Airflow, they are familiar with the Airflow sensors. So where we are sensing for the certain things, like in this case, we for LakeFS, we are sensing for commit. So as soon as the commit happens, you can in, do another task or invoke another DAG or something. Or when you upload a file, when you upload an object, uh, you can sense for that upload process. And as soon as the upload is done, then you can start some another process. Uh, so those are the sensors. But if you don't want to use the uh, Air, LakeFS provider uh, for Airflow, then you can also use just the uh, Python package. Uh, so we provide a Python package. You can just directly call your Python APIs uh, from your Airflow code. Yeah, so 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 you're trying to describe something that is starting to build in my mind, which is someone uploaded something new. I sense it. I create a branch with LakeFS. I run an ETL. I merge that branch, like some sort of data versioning integration that we're about to see soon. As we do that, and and I'm guessing that a lot of people here are familiar with Airflow or tend or want to use Airflow and so on. So I'm, I'm uh, there's another question popping up right now. There's actually two questions. One is what orchestrator tools do you use or want to use in your environment? And the other one is uh, generic on the technology stack. We have a bunch of different uh, uh, examples that we can bring up now and different things. So according to your answers, we'll probably share the right thing. So I'm going to wait 10 more seconds for the folks to be able to answer. So yeah, so everybody's on Airflow. Okay, so it's not surprising that people that joined the uh, Airflow uh, webinar uh, are on Airflow, but just so you know, LakeFS also integrates with other orchestration tools. Some of them are written in front of you right now. So I'll end this poll. Thank you for thank you for thank you for for answering. Um, and this is what we're going to show today. We're going to show two things. We're going to show like the easy button uh, with lots of lots of uh, value associated with it, and then. Uh, the more deep integration with even more value associated with it. The first thing that we're going to do is take an existing DAG and show how you version control the execution of that DAG from outside of the DAG. Meaning we're going to take the production environment, we're going to branch it out. That branch is a zero copy clone in LakeFS, right? So I make an isolated version of my data without actually copying any of the data. And if someone is wondering how, uh, um, and feel free to post questions and we can uh, uh, do that as well. And then we're gonna run the DAG uh, in that separate branch. And when we're done, we're gonna merge that back in. What this gives me is if there was an error here, I didn't promote any bad data to production, or and even if I did, I can easily revert the entire data lake back. So that's the first example that we're going to show with an existing DAG. That's something that you can in minutes add to any DAG that you already have in your system. And then the second thing, which is what typically our users end up doing after they uh, fall in love with the existing DAG's capabilities, is actually calling Git capabilities from within the DAG itself. So imagine that big DAG that we saw before 
being able to commit throughout the DAG, to branch throughout the DAG, to being able to go to that specific point and then roll and then see the data set as it was at a specific uh, data transformation within that DAG. Uh, so what do we need in what do we need to set up in order to show this, Amit? Yeah, so I'll walk through that. What's the setup required? Like first thing you need is the uh, LakeFS server. Uh, for that, you can sign up to LakeFS Cloud. In a few seconds, you'll have the LakeFS environment. I'll walk through that. And also we provide the, all the samples we are going to run today. It is on our Git repository, which you can uh, uh, clone and, and run on your own. Fantastic. So these are the same links that I had before, guys. And, and, and we're also going to send this later on uh, for everybody that's registered so you can follow up if you want. So if so, if this takes a little bit uh, longer, then you can follow up later. And we're also going to show some new capabilities here. Uh, so there are some uh, exciting new integrations between Airflow and uh, LakeFS. So specifically, the UI now is integrated uh, when you use uh, the Lake the operators. What that means is, but let's say you go in a in a DAG and you create a commit to LakeFS, that will that commit in LakeFS will automatically include a button that you see here on the left that takes you to that Airflow UI and will also show you how you can go from that Airflow step within the DAG and click on a button and get to the LakeFS UI, right? To see that commit, for example. So we made it very, very easy to manage this as to manage this at scale with Airflow and LakeFS. Um, so let's go to the demo. Okay, let me share my screen. Thank you. Okay, let me hide those Zoom controls so I can navigate. Okay, so can you see my screen, Ido? I see the demo slide, yes. Okay, excellent. So the first thing is the prerequisite is to have a Lake FS server, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can sign up to LakeFS Cloud. Uh, this is the link to go to that. Uh, here, just provide your information to sign up. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it will take a few seconds to spin up the uh, LakeFS Cloud environment, LakeFS server in LakeFS Cloud environment. Uh, so let I already did this earlier. So uh, let me log in to my cloud environment. Okay. Okay, so once you uh, sign up for LakeFS Cloud, a uh, couple of things, you'll receive an email uh, like, uh, like this, where you can just uh, verify your account. You can just click on the link here to verify your account, or you can take this code and go to the LakeFS uh, Cloud environment, and you'll see a verify link here uh, and enter the code to verify. So that's important because once you verify, you get a lot more capabilities, functionality uh, for LakeFS Cloud. And as, as soon as you sign up uh, within, as I mentioned, a few seconds, you will have the LakeFS playground or playground environment ready uh, in one of the uh, AWS uh, in, in the region. But you can set up, uh, you can spin up the LakeFS Cloud for, uh, for your and other cloud vendors. Let's say if you're using Azure, you can also spin up uh, for Azure. Uh, but by default, uh, the playground is provided in AWS, and this will be the link uh, to connect to the LakeFS server. Uh, so if you click on this, it will take you straight to your LakeFS server. And again, uh, once once you get into that, you'll basically log in uh, yeah, to uh, to this LakeFS server environment. It's the same login that you provided when, while signing up. And once uh, you go to LakeFS uh, Playground, by default, you'll see a sample repository. And the sample repository is, is using the storage, uh, uh, S3 storage that we are providing, S3 bucket that we provide uh, for, for the Playground. But we allow you to also connect to your storage account also. So if you have some data sitting in your uh, S3 bucket, you can connect uh, to S your own storage also. But this we provide a storage so that you can play with uh, like FS. You don't you don't need to have use your own 
uh, storage. So with LakeFS Cloud, we provide everything. We provide the server, LakeFS server running in LakeFS Cloud, as well as the S3 bucket to play with, uh, with that. Anything else you want to add about a video about the LakeFS Cloud I missed? No, like uh, this is it's worth mentioning that this uh, LakeFS Cloud is a way to spin up LakeFS really quickly. LakeFS is open source. We'll talk about it soon. Uh, the capabilities that we're showing here are all on the open source uh, version of LakeFS. We're just utilizing LakeFS Cloud in this case to bring up an environment in seconds that we can use, which is super helpful, at least for me. If I don't need to run anything on my computer, I like it. But so the next requirement is uh, is download the sample repository, basically a Git clone. Uh, so you need to have Git running on your laptop. If you want to run this sample on your own on your laptop, you need Git as well as Docker. So those are the two requirements. And what I'm going to do next is uh, just go to this sample repository, just walk through this sample repository here. So we have multiple samples, but today we are going to focus on the Airflow uh, samples. Here also we have uh, four kinds of uh, four notebooks. Today we'll focus on the Airflow demo existing DAG as well as the new DAG. Uh, those things, two things that Ido mentioned earlier. But we have other uh, notebooks also, like if you want to try hooks or DAG versioning, uh, we have those notebooks also. Again, just on the prerequisite mentioned here, uh, you need the playground environment in LakeFS Cloud, or you can spin up uh, LakeFS in your local environment on your laptop or on our server somewhere and use that. Okay, so let's do, uh, set up this uh, sample repository. So first thing you need to clone this. I already cloned this. It might take a couple of seconds uh, or minute, depending upon your uh, internet bandwidth, how it might take some time to clone this. So I already did ahead of time. And then go to this particular uh, folder here. So let me go, go to my terminal here. So I already, as I mentioned earlier, already cloned this samples, uh, like FS samples repository. And uh, let's go to that folder. And then next run this command to build the Docker container and run this sample in a Docker container environment. So just copy this and run this. And right now, if I look into my doc, uh, desktop, uh, 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 Docker desktop, uh, right now I don't have any container running. So when I run this, it will uh, create this container of, when you run this for the first time, it might take a couple of minutes to download all the uh, requirements uh, all the jars and all the libraries required for this demo. Uh, so, but I ran this ahead of time once earlier, so it has downloaded everything. But when you run it for the first time, it might take five to 10 minutes, depending on your uh, network bandwidth. So now- I have Dependencies, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. So now I, I have this container running. Uh, this is, Airflow integration demo, which includes uh, your Spark environment, Jupyter Notebook, as well as Airflow. Uh, so everything is contained in the contained in this container. So you don't need to install anything else. You just need the LakeFS server, which you can spin up in the cloud, or run LakeFS server locally on your laptop, and and uh, start this container or run this container. And this container includes everything required for this uh, demo today. Okay, so now once the container is running, I can go to and open the Jupyter Node, uh, Jupyter Lab UI. So let's click on this. Okay, so so far I just did all the setup. It took me a few minutes to do all the setup, like sign up for cloud, like if it's cloud, run the con uh, install the container, and now I'm ready to run the demo. Anything else you want to add? Uh, Ido, I missed anything? No, uh, I think we're gonna get to the next stop of LakeFS when we want to create some sort of credentials for this to connect to LakeFS, right? Okay, yes. So now we're starting. This is where we start with LakeFS. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to run this existing DAG. So if you remember, Ido talked about uh, this. Let me pull this here, uh, my slide here. So existing DAG, uh, so I'm going to run through this as well as this demo, I'll show both. So index, index, 
existing DAG basically will run this DAG in the isolated environment without impacting your production data. And let me increase the size here, so zoom in. Okay. So next you'll just follow all the instructions in the notebook here. Uh, so there are a couple of set of tasks. Uh, so you'll provide the credentials, like FS credentials to connect to the Lake FS server. And for that, uh, you can, uh, you need the Lake FS endpoint URL. So when you sign up for the Lake FS cloud, or if you are running locally, it will be local host. Uh, but here, this is your uh, Lake FS endpoint. Uh, let me just copy this. This is my Lake FS endpoint URL. Next, I need the access key and secret key. For that, you can go into uh, Lake FS server, go to the administration and create the access key here. So just click on that. And <clears throat> just copy this access key. Let's change this here. So I'm assigning into the variable and then copy the secret key. Uh, once you close this, you won't see the secret key again. Uh, so maybe copy it somewhere, keep it safe, or you can come back and create the new access key. Uh, so let's get the secret key here. Okay, so these are my LakeFS uh, credentials. So let's run this cell. So I assign all those in a variable. And next I'm going to create the repository so you can uh, define the repository name. Uh, you can came, keep the same name or you can change it to something you are, would like to call. I'm going to keep the same repo name. And uh, we are going to- yeah. The forward slash at the end of the uh, LakeFS endpoint or does it not matter? Oh, um, that's a good catch. Uh, let me remove that. Yes, so let's remove this uh, slash at the end. Uh, and you'll see why we did that later. I'll explain that. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. So let's. And next is when we create the repository, you define your the main branch. Uh, it can some people call it production. I'm going to call it main. Some people call it master. Uh, so whatever you want to call it, uh, you can change this here or leave this as is. And and we're also creating, going to create a new branch to run our DAG. And that's also defined in this variable. Okay. So the next set of task is defining the storage namespace. As I mentioned earlier, uh, with the LakeFS cloud, we provide uh, the S3 bucket, but we, you can connect to your own storage, whether it's Blob or GCS. Uh, Azure Blob or S3. So in this case, for Playground, we are using S3, and this is the storage name and bucket we are using. So you can use the same bucket uh, to create the additional repository. So what you can do here is uh, use this storage name space. At the end, you can add the repo name in there. So that will make it unique or, or create a subfolder within that. Uh, so that's my storage namespace to for my new repository. So, so you're using this namespace because the cloud uses uh, like the traverse uh, buckets, right? Correct. So this but, is the traverse provided bucket. Yep. But but I think it's maybe worth calling out that if you use LakeFS, either LakeFS Cloud or LakeFS on-prem or any version of LakeFS that's not this playground then obviously the data sits in place on top of your buckets, and then you will just put here whatever bucket you want to use for this repository as opposed to our buckets. This is just a very simple way to get started without, without, going, through, without going through your security team to give, to give access to uh, an external vendor to read your buckets and things like yep. that. Yep. Yeah, this is just, again, the bucket we provide for your playground uh, so you can play with uh, LakeFS. Okay, uh, next I'm going to just run some of the uh, setup task here. <clears throat> what this, this task is doing is basically verifying that I can connect to LakeFS. Uh, so here verifying the LakeFS credentials and uh, make sure the airflow is running. I uh, started the airflow and there are a couple of things um, creating the variable. Uh, if you're familiar with the airflow, creating some of the variables and saving those access keys and secret keys 
in the variable uh, so we can use the, those in the DAG. It's uh, Airflow DAG. <coughs> Now everything is getting started, and we have an Airflow running, a LakeFS server running, and Jupyter Notebook running. We're all good. We can start running uh, DAGs. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let's. The next thing is, uh, so all the setup task is done. Let me. Next time I'm going to create the repository. You can create the repository from the UI, or you using a command line. As I mentioned earlier, you can run all those commands using command line, or you can use the API, Python API. In this case, I'm going to use Python client API and create the repository. When you create the repository, you specify the repo name and the storage namespace variable that we set up earlier, and the main branch, main production branch for the your repository. Okay, so I just created this existing Airflow existing DAG repo. So if I go and refresh my UI here. <clears throat> now I have this existing DAG repo. So if I open this, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention here, you can see the storage namespace. I'm using the playground bucket with some prefix here or folder name within that. So it is separate, it is stored in the separate folder. Okay, so right now this uh, repository is empty. There's nothing in there and we'll populate that data soon using the DAG. And next thing I'm going to uh, run an existing DAG and I'll walk through this code. I'll explain everything. So let me run this. <coughs> and, and while this thing is running, let me open the, uh, you can review the, you can go to Airflow DAG here. One second. Uh, one second. Uh, somehow it's uh, giving me some issue. Let me just quickly check. I, I noticed something. So that airflow is running. Let me let me just quickly restart this container. There's something doesn't look familiar, something missing. So let me let me stop and restart. And I need to fix something. Just one second. It looks like it's thought that the airflow is running already in this container. So let me just quickly. This. Let me make a clean up this container. This could only happen in a live webinar, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let me start the container again. Sorry about that. It's okay. And if you need to, I have uh, another uh, uh, environment. Just let me know. Let me connect to my notebook, run this in. Okay, now it's starting Airflow. Like earlier I noticed it did not restart the Airflow. So I'm restarting Airflow so it will pick up the, the DAGs. Okay, while this thing is going on, uh, let me just walk through quickly this, uh, the wrapper DAG uh, code as well as the existing uh, DAG. So in this case for existing DAG, I'm using uh, like a uh, Airflow tutorial. If you have used some of those Airflow tutorial, I took the same thing, which includes an ETL tutorial uh, where it does the extraction, uh, transformation and load. And in the, Extraction, it's a simple thing. It's using some order values. So it has order ID and the order amount. Uh, and in the transformation, it's adding the order values. So each orders, uh, we just adding the dollar amount uh, to get the total order value. And, and after that, it loads, uh, creates a file. Uh, it, prints, uh, it prints as well as creates a file in this case. 
when you create it, the only change we made here is after the file gets created, we, we upload that to LakeFS repository. So, so LakeFS can version control that. Uh, so here, if you see, we are uploading this uh, object using this, our uh, Python client using upload object to upload this file uh, into LakeFS repository. So we can keep track of that. And here, if you see, we are pulling this repo name uh, from the variable, which we configured earlier and also picking up the new branch which is also another variable we saved on the other okay so i think now my airflow environment is running <laughs> and let's i already created the repository so i'll skip this one now let's rerun this tag <clears throat> and now let me open the airflow ui and when you, it will ask for the uh, a login and password and the login and password is Airflow, which is also say mentioned here in the notebook. So let's get my login here. We're secure in this uh, webinar. <laughs> okay, so let's walk through this tag. So this is the wrapper tag, uh, which uh, we created here and running the existing DAG with inside or uh, triggering existing DAG within the wrapper DAG. <laughs> so what it does it before it triggers the existing DAG, it will create an, a branch. So you have a production branch in LakeFS, it will create a new branch and then trigger the DAG. And once the DAG finishes, it will commit the changes and merge the changes into your production branch. The way it helps here, as, as you mentioned earlier, let's say if uh, something fails in the DAG, you are not changing anything in your production branch or production data. Everything is running in isolation. Your whole DAG is running in isolation without making any changes in production data. And once uh, the DAG finishes, you commit your changes. Uh, we also have option to run the hooks or actions where you can do a CI, CD kind of operation, quality checks, data quality checks, uh, make sure everything looks good. And if everything looks good, then you merge that uh, all the changes into production in a single merge command. So let's say your DAG made changes in hundreds of uh, files. And when you merge, everything merges into production in instantaneously. Uh, so people, users will not see uh, random like a half data set. Like when you are running directly uh, in production, uh, and if you are changing lots of tables, lots of files, a user might have inconsistent data. Uh, like let's say if you have foreign keys or something, foreign data set, they might see inconsistent information uh, if you are running directly in production. But if you if you use LakeFS and run this DAG in isolation, uh, then everything is in the separate environment. Uh, and when you merge, everything merges together instantaneously into your production data set. So, okay, so let's, uh, so that's the kind of high level about this DAG. You can review this code later on your own. Uh, basically, I'll just quickly show that, but I won't go into too much detail. So what it is doing here is calling the LakeFS operators, which I mentioned earlier to create the branch. In this case, I'm creating the branch, calling the create branch operation uh, to create this ETL branch. And then you run the trigger, uh, which is existing trigger or run DAG operation. Uh, and then after that, you uh, this is uh, like committing the changes. So you call the commit operator and the merge operator to merge the changes. So very simple. Uh, the wrapper DAG, it just create the branch, uh, run trigger the DAG, commit your changes and merge at the end. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can take any ETL that you want and just apply it here. Right, yes. Super mm -hmm. easy to get it running. So uh, what's new in the integration with LakeFS here? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to show that next. So so here, let's say you ran this um, DAG and you want to see what changes are happening. In this case, let's say I did some commit and I want to see what changes happen, what commit happened. So from here, uh, we have a LakeFS, you can go straight to the LakeFS UI from Airflow. Uh, so earlier we were using a plugin, but now it is packaged within 
uh, with it our provider uh, so if you create a use the commit operator or if you use the merge operator you'll see this uh, button here like a fs and if you click on that it will straight away take you to that particular commit you made and when you uh, when you make use any operator now we automatically pass all the metadata also from airflow into like fs so for example for this commit i can see what was the dag name dag id what's the runtime it was and all the url required like here uh, url to go to the uh, to the dag all that information is automatically passed uh, to uh, to like fs so you don't have to do this manually um, and also you can see in this commit what changes happen so here i can see this this was my file which i uploaded or committed to uh, through this uh, dag in this case if you remember earlier i showed that this uh, is order value total order value and it creates a files and uploads a file so here if you want to see the content of the file also you can just click here and it will show you yeah order values total order values this much uh, so this way uh, from from your dag you can straight away go to lakefs and see what changes happen in this data set uh, in this example i have one single file but imagine in your dag it can be much more complicated complicated dag which lots of file or lots of data changes so you can see all those changes happening all the uh, here in the like fs ui and, and also yeah sorry i yeah. think you're about to say the, the, also the opposite i can see all the list of commits of changes that happen to like fs and then go to airflow correct so if you come let's say in this case this in the repo if i have um, different branches i created i just ran this etl job in a different branch so if I go here and look for the commit for this, and if I find this commit here, and if I want to go, uh, I can see all my changes, but now I want to go to Airflow uh, UI, then I can just straight away from here also, I can go to Airflow, let me sign in. And it will straight away take me to the tag I was showing earlier. So it's now we have integration the both way from Airflow. You can go to LakeFS UI. From LakeFS UI, you can come back to the uh, Airflow tag. Make sense? Yes, it looks very useful to me. OK. So what happens if something fails? Yes. So let's talk about like what happens and something fails and how we can help to troubleshoot that. Uh, so for that, I have. I have another notebook, uh, which uh, let me close some of these things so it will be easier to walk through that. So this was your existing DAG uh, and it was successful. There's no failure here, but we have another uh, notebook. It's called the new DAG, which as Ido mentioned earlier, is something like this, where you run your DAG uh, in isolation again in this case after each step in the DAG after each transformation task any task you're running you commit your changes uh, so you can see the full data lineage data evolution evolution like how data is changing over time with each each task each step then it becomes easy to track everything monitor everything what changes are happening so you can if something fails you can see where in what step it failed, what was the status of the data at that time when it failed. So that's the, uh, another notebook we have for, to run your uh, DAG with additional information. So I, I, pre, I pre ran this DAG because this takes about five minutes to run. Uh, again, you just follow all the instructions here to run this DAG. Again, provide the like FS credentials. This is the repo name. This is the new DAG repo some variables uh, for setting up the main branch and the and the branch for ingestion your status storage names space again in this case i'm just using the same playground uh, storage with uh, adding the repo folder run this setup task create the repository and run your DAG. <clears throat> in this DAG, in this notebook you will run the DAG with the uh, current data set first with no errors and then you run again with, with some kind of error message using the new latest file. 
so let's look into if something everything is successful uh, so let's go into visualize airflow DAG. so oh okay uh, let's, we started this airflow right yeah i think i deleted uh, my uh, all the useful information when i was cleaning up uh, so but uh, quickly i'll walk through that uh, uh, let me see if I can rerun quickly uh, and it might take some time, but while I'm doing this. I can I can show on my screen. I have it. Oh, that's oh, if you have it running, let, mm, that's great. And you, you, you'll walk me through the, yeah. uh, there we go. Can you see my screen? Yep, yep, looks good. So if you uh, can go drop, yeah. I think you wanted to go first of all to this one, to... Yeah. Sorry, yeah, this one, right? The, yeah, the one which ran successfully. So if you go back to like a, your UI, uh, Airflow UI, Sorry. and in the run, you see those drop down uh, in the middle uh, section, run, yeah. And you sure. can pick a successful run and update, click on update button. This would be green now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, actually, they, both, they both failed for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's select the second one uh, so in yeah. this yeah so that's where we want to show like if something fails how you kind of die, troubleshoot the problem in this case this particular task failed so if you go to the click on the log button uh, it will show you the log details and if you just search for exception here in the log uh, any other message just con um, control f exception so here you'll see that uh, the partition column not found. Uh, so what we were doing in this uh, DAG is uh, partitioning the data set using a Spark. And we tried to partition on fifth column and that column is missing in the file. Uh, so now let's, uh, that's the error message. Now we want to see what, how the data looked like at that time. Uh, so we can uh, go to the, if you go back to the uh, UI, Airflow UI, and just go uh, previous screen, go to previous screen here. Yep, and close this. Okay, so before this uh, this step failed, uh, this we can go to the commit, the previous commit. Uh, this yeah. yeah, and yeah. here just click on like FS, yeah, click on this UI. So straight away, it will take you to the commit, the previous commit to that step failed. So what you can see what was the status of your data set at that time. So if you click on this show objects changes, uh, just click on that link. So we got this latest file and this in this latest file, there are only four columns while we are trying to partition on fifth column, that's where it is failing. So the way uh, we, you can see the full data evolution or, or any data lineage changes happening over time, uh, so because we are committing after each step, so we just saw that previous commit happened before we ran this uh, Spark job to partition the data. And we can see at that time, the data set did not have that column uh, number five, which we are trying to use to partition it. So that way it helps you to troubleshoot the DAG or problem with the DAG very easy. And this becomes very really important when you have lots of steps, as you mentioned earlier, if you have thousands of steps, and if one step fails, you can quickly see what was the data at that time and then figure out what happened with, uh, why that had happened with that data set. Yeah, it's pretty cool that I can also, like one of the things that I like about this is, is the fact that I can go to any specific commit and I can click here on browse commit objects and I see the entire data lake at the time of that commit. In my case, <laughs> we have one file. This is a very simple one, but imagine that you can go to this commit or then if you want, you can go to the parent commit, right? And see what the parent commit looked like and what were the different files that existed in the parent commit at, the, at any specific time. So this lineage, which is super complicated to get on data and super simple to get on code where we use things like GitHub, right? Is now becomes like a second nature. So anybody who's familiar with, uh, with uh, uh, Git repositories, Right, this this is this is becoming something very very easy for them to do, and here are all the different branches that that were executed here, and you can look at the data for every branch of them, and and again look at the commit history for every one one of those branches and what's happening. It's 
it's super cool and super easy. And and like we said before, the integration is a blast. So thanks for the demo. I mean, it's very, very, very helpful. Um, I want to give we 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 have uh, some people on here. Uh, I I don't see the LinkedIn in front of me, so I apologize. But we have a bunch of people on the Zoom. So if anybody has uh, questions uh, or things like that, please feel free to ask those questions uh, using the Q and A um, uh, um, button that you should see on your screen. In the meantime, just going back to uh, where we were before, kind of I want to share some some uh, some links with you and some things that can be useful. But just to summarize this, we're talking about significant cost in 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 storage because all the copies, all going back and forth in the time, all the branches, all those ETLs that run in isolation, they're all done with zero clone copy with LegFS. So. Uh, you get, depending on how you use your storage today, you get significant save. But I think the, the, the major thing is the improve, improvement in efficiency, right? We have uh, users that uh, blogged on us and said that they saved 80% of their time by using uh, LakeFS, right? It's, these engineering best practices are there for code for a reason, and now you can apply them for, 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 for data. And even if something happened, even if you missed everything, and a production error occurred, you recover from it in milliseconds by rolling back, as opposed to um, manual heavy lifting labor intensive tasks that we do today to try and bring back the, the lake to a good state. Um, all of that, everything that we show today is available in the open source solution of LakeFS. As you can see from LakeFS Cloud, we also have a SaaS solution. We have not used any of the, of the paid uh, features today on this demo, so you can achieve all of this in the open source. Of course, uh, we do have some enterprise features as well, such as SSO or auditing or uh, our back that you can that are that can be available either as an enterprise solution you deploy on prem or for LakeFS or the LakeFS SaaS cloud solution. So. Uh, before I share with you the the, the final uh, links, it will be good also to hear from you guys if this was helpful or not. So there is uh, uh, one more uh, uh, poll that I'm putting uh, in front of you. So if you can uh, share if uh, this was uh, helpful for you or not, if this was helpful, very helpful or complete waste of your time, that can be uh, <laughs> good for us to know for, for, for future uh uh, webinars because we would like to know where to focus on. As next steps, we'll share this uh, repositories. We have uh, the LakeFS cl cloud playground that you can use. And of course, we have a very engaging Slack community. So if anybody wants to join our Slack, the help channel is a great channel to uh, ask questions on if someone wants to get started with LakeFS. So I'm going to... Um, uh, finish this poll right now and then wait just a few more seconds to see if there's additional questions that we have not answered live here. Going once, going twice. Okay. I mean, thanks. Thank you very much. I think this was uh, really interesting and I hope this helps uh, users of uh, Airflow and uh, Data Lakes uh, get uh, a much better way to version control their data. So I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you for joining everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.